sci-fi psychics cannot help themselves. Have you heard of the Akashic Records? Imagine making stuff up and then telling people that it's come from like the eternal vaults of knowledge and wisdom that stretches back to before time. That's the level we're coming in at today. And it just goes more and more off the rails the more you look at it. Let's talk about this. So with the Akashic Records, some of this stuff, it just goes, it just goes mental, especially when this guy starts talking. Bill Foss and, and man who's trying to hold back tears. When I see this guy, it just reminds me of, you know when someone says, try not to think about puppies, and then all you can do is think about puppies. This is like someone said to him, I'm gonna take this picture, just try and not look like a charlatan, and all he can think about is looking like a charlatan. Don't know if he is, but some of the crap that he comes out with just makes me wonder, it really does. Hey everyone, if you're new here, I'm Andy Fellows, and I make videos on when new age spirituality becomes destructive, and that little bit more cult-like. If you're interested in a more grounded and skeptical approach to new age spirituality, then why not subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. So the Akashic Records is basically the library of everything. It's this, this idea that all knowledge that could ever exist, every event that's ever happened, every thought that's ever happened, every feeling anyone's ever had in the past, in the present, and all the way into the future exists in some sort of like timeless library, right? It's sort of out of time, out of space library that you can access with your mind, which I guess is part of an explanation as to why there's been an uptick in interest in the occult in like social justice circles because fuck your Twitter history, fuck Twitter feeds, right? Can you imagine if the people that like the cancellers got access to the Akashic Records? That's the mother load. Look at all these things everyone's ever thought. Let's have them. So the Akashic Records is sort of from the other side of New Age spirituality. There's kind of two lineages with New Age spirituality. On the one side you've got all the stuff that like James Jani covered in his uh, series which is like more sort of like the new thought sort of side of things. So you've got like the law of attraction, think and grow rich and the empowerment and all that kind of side of things. And then you've got the other side of it, which is much more the occult strain, you know, coming from people like Helena Blavatsky. And it's actually, I believe, Helena Blavatsky that popularized something close to this idea of the Akashic Records. So this is where it gets theosophical, which is apparently a real word, but only a real word because Helena Blavatsky called her society the Theosophical Society. Only a real word because it's a noun. Like, And for anyone who's not familiar, Helena Blavatsky is like the OG sci-fi psychic. She's the one that kind of took a lot of the Eastern mysticism stuff and combined it with sort of the Western stuff and effectively became the the mother of the New Age spirituality as we know it now. And, and it's not the same thing now as it was then, obviously. It's changed over time. You obviously got the hippie movement in there for a minute. But yeah, this is this is where a lot of the more occult side of New Age stuff was popularized uh, during Darwin's time. And uh, yeah, Helen Blavatsky did not like Darwin, could not stand the bloke. She thought him and his ideas were rubbish, but she loved her own imagination and she made a whole basically made a whole like mages guild out of it in practice though the sort of accessing the akashic records is really not that different from any other kind of channeling you know you sit there you open your mind up you get some ideas and then you pass off those ideas as being of a supernatural origin bit of a song and dance some theatrics and then barnum statements out your ass that's usually how this kind of thing goes and the akashic records is is no different editing andy here quickly i realize i forgot to add this into the video so let me just say this quickly now. If you're enjoying the content on the channel, then you should also definitely follow me on Instagram. I've been making these little slide things over there, which cover some of the stuff I talk about on the channel in a more bite-sized format and some stuff that, you know, there's not always a place for in a video, but I still want to put out there and sort of share with you. So if you're on Instagram, definitely follow me on there. Anyway back on with the video. So I was watching this video from uh, Mrs. Doubtfire, and she's not actually Mrs. Doubtfire, but she gives me Mrs. Doubtfire vibes, and uh, she said this. You need to assume that this is going to work for you. Your doubts are going to stop and hinder the, the energies to flow freely and the information to come through. I just want you to put your mind to the side, your analytical, critical mind. It is okay that it's there, but just leave it by your side and assume and pretend for the time that you want to go into the records that this actually can work for you. While I appreciate the fact that she says like it's okay that your analytical mind's there, the thing that troubles me is that she's recommending that you turn it off to do something like this, that you're then gonna take things that you will then perhaps use in your life from. I don't think it's that you're turning your analytical mind off. I don't think that's what's actually happening when you're doing a channeling thing like this. It's that you're allowing things to slip past your regular normal critical filter, your regular analytical filter that in a normal sense you wouldn't. Your, your analytical mind's not turned off. You, I don't think you can turn it off. You can perhaps sort of 
ignore it for a bit. And I think that getting into the habit of ignoring it or, or putting any any sort of uh, objections to the side and listening to things that are coming from a leader or listening to your own sort of thoughts and feelings, your intuitions in a way that you're not actually examining them. I think that can open you up to the potential for, you know, people taking advantage, people manipulating you. Now, obviously that's, that's a concern with this kind of thing, right? My concern is if I'm sitting there and I'm going, right, I'm going to assume this is going to work and I'm going to turn off my analytical mind and I sit down to do this thing and I have this kind of an experience, how will I know if it's worked if I'm not going to be evaluating it? using my analytical mind. Really the way that I've heard like you're supposed to be able to access the Akashic Records through is by doing some sort of meditation or visualization. So the idea being that you sort of using one of many different kind of visualization techniques, you sit down, you close your eyes, you imagine that you're in a library of some kind, you imagine that you're opening a book or you've been met by like a law keeper of the other world and they're coming up to you and they're giving you a book or something. You open that up, and then in there is some information that you need to know. Now, my question here is, is this not just an elaborate visualization technique that can be used to encourage a person to see something from another point of view, maybe, and like sort of be open to new ideas, which you may not have been open to before in such a way that you're gonna challenge them less, or perhaps it's gonna bypass your cognitive dissonance because you're putting yourself in a more receptive state because you're meditating, you're visualizing, and you're imagining it's coming from a divine source or a source that's safe, a source that you trust. Is that not what this is? And if that is the case, then I can't imagine this would be really useful for those times where it's not enough to just sort of see things from another point of view, like enough to just sort of change your mindset, you know. In those instances where you need to go through like a genuine deep psychological overhaul or like you need to go realize some really hard truths, this kind of a setting doesn't seem like it's predisposed towards enabling that kind of a change. It seems like this is more the kind of thing that you would get like normally with a psychic, for example, where you go along and they tell you something that sort of strokes your ego or, you know, like a, like I said before, like a Barnum statement that just sort of is broad, broad enough to feel like it applies to you and you go away feeling like you know yourself a bit better, but really it's just fluff. It's just sort of trivia, if you like, some sort of ultimately inconsequential generalizations that in some way fit into your self-image, but uh, or may now have been cobbled onto your self-image, but ultimately uh, in transcendental. I think for some people I could see this kind of working and you may get like, I guess like a, a CBT like consequence of doing this. If you know, you're predisposed towards being very open-minded to this kind of thing. And you know, ultimately with CBT, as far as I understand it, and I could be wrong, obviously not an expert on this, but as far as I understand with CBT, the end result is really that you're able, you are able to see things from another point of view and you are able to work through your processing of something in a way that leads you to feel better about it and you're able to, you know, navigate life in a different way. In that sense, you c conceivably, you could get that kind of an outcome from doing something like, like an Akashic Records reading or a, a visualization, right? I would say that that would possibly be more likely if you're doing it with someone who's doing like a reading for you and in that sense it will be hard to say whether the positive outcome had come as a result of like the reading itself or the you know human empathy and connection that you get from sitting with someone who's giving their attention to you and listening to you and trying to you know support you in some way I mean let's not underestimate the impact of human connection and empathy, which is in short supply at the moment, I think. But I think the trouble with something like this is that you you can't guarantee that you're gonna get that CBT like benefit from something like this. You know, CBT is evidence-based. It's something that people have put a lot of time and energy into actually researching and like making effective. Whereas something like this, cowboys, literally cowboys, <laughs> like there's just, everyone's got their own take on it. Everyone's got their version of how this should work. And if you're doing this with someone who's like a, a re someone doing a reading for you or whatever, then you're in the hands of someone who could literally just say anything. And if you're in a receptive state, that can go badly for you. And I think that's true of any kind of reading in this kind of a case. I'm always very wary of people that like try and predict your future because that gets fucking dark and fucking bad really fucking quickly, you know? And if you're doing this for yourself, like you could just imagine, like sitting down and doing like a visualization for yourself and I'm gonna open up to the divine and then coming away literally just feeling like your own behavior and your own thoughts and feelings are, are right by the way you know and actually you're 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 on the right track and everything you're doing is fine and everything's good you're just such a good person and you just need to keep going you know there's no reason to believe that doing this kind of a, of a visualization for yourself is gonna at any point allow you to see into your blind spots and that is a concern I also have with something like 
like shadow work where, you know, ostensibly it is a mental health therapy, it is, it is a mental health thing. And yet, typically this is something you do on your own. So while you might be facing some uncomfortable things, you are still at the sort of mercy of your own biases, of your own cognitive distortions, of your own limitations and your own blind spots, which is not always gonna be the case when you're in an actual therapeutic situation, you know. Often with the new age stuff, it strikes me as like, this is just a bunch of people who could do with therapy <laughs> rather than like faffing around with like metaphysical this and that and supernatural and theosophical this and that just like go to some therapy but that said it does make sense to me and maybe you'll agree with this maybe you'll disagree with this let me know in the comments what you think but it does make sense to me that the degree to which someone is open-minded to this kind of stuff correlates to some degree with the extent to which it benefits them does that make sense like obviously it's not going to be like definitely it's going to benefit them you know 10 out of 10 if they're open to it 10 out of 10 I, I think it would be more likely that if they're open to it 10 out of 10 it might benefit them three or four out of ten because you've obviously got the limitations of when it comes to the supernatural stuff at least from my point of view fucking nonsense but then at the same time the benefits may come from something like the placebo effect or genuinely the human connection if you're having like a reading with someone you know the trouble comes though I think when you start seeing these ideas that, as like some sort of divine truth of like the idea that you've got this information from the divine you know repository of all of the knowledge of all lives you've ever lived and all lives anybody else will ever live and has ever lived and this is so, this is eternal wisdom that's being presented to me by the law keepers of yore. It's like, whoa. <laughs> at that point, you're more likely to take this information on and treat it in a way that is not so grounded, it is not so critical, is not so analytical, and that does concern me here. Because then it goes from being something that maybe has given you another point of view which might be worthwhile to being something that you might actually act on without thinking too much or be like enthusiastically making a central part of your day-to-day -day life when actually it might be detrimental to you. You know, there's that kind of a, an issue there. But the question remains, is the Akashic Records an elaborate visualization technique that allows individuals to potentially bypass their cognitive dissonance and see things from another point of view, be that good or bad? Or is the Akashic Records everything and nothing all at once? Is it the vibrational frequency of your higher self transcending the limitations of the fifth dimension so that you and your third, third density, fourth density uh, mind can ascend to the eighth dimension and get the eternal wisdom of the timeless? Is it this garbled mess is what I'm asking you? <laughs> the Akashic Records is a an etheric uh, language, it's a, it's actual place as well as a modern day modality of healing and intuitive work. You have a personal book of life that's stored in the etheric field of the planet in the Akashic Records and you can access this during your lifetime and it will give you a deeper knowing of who you are and why you're here. Pretty sure he's right actually, ignore me, Bill's got it, fuck everything I just said, Bill Foss has nailed it. Fuck Occam's razor, eh? Who fucking cares about Occam's razor? Who fucking cares about logic? Who gives a shit about actually thinking? Why not just spew fucking garbled poetry and just hope some of it lands and inspires people? Why not? Just put some epic music behind it, some weird visuals and a psychedelic backdrop and we are fucking golden. I'm actually really excited to get like an Akashic Records reading for myself and then go through it in a video like this on the channel. Um, Cause normally when I'm talking about this kind of stuff, it is sort of hypothetical, you know, Know, theoretical sort of looking into things but it would be really interesting to actually have a reading that's done for me and sort of look into that and pick that apart a little bit so if that's something that you want to see happen then make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell also if you want to help make that happen and also get access to a bunch of other cool sort of content that I've been putting out lately then check out the patreon in the link in the description I've been making these audio companion things over there which are like sort of I go into stuff that I don't always get to talk about on the channel because of like time constraints or because because YouTube doesn't like you talking about certain things on the platform. So what I've been doing is making these little like audio companion things where I go into one of the topics of, of the videos in the week and explore them in a bit more detail. Also, at the end of the month, I do these live streams for patrons where we kind of connect in the chat and, you know, just chat about behind the scenesy stuff. And I do book recommendations and things like that. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, you want to help support the channel and or you want to make the Akashic Records reading video happen sooner, then check out the Patreon link in the description and uh, see which tier is right for you. I'm Andy Fellows. I'm here pretty much every Thursday and Sunday. If you enjoyed the video today, please remember to hit the like button before you leave. And otherwise, please be kind and ask good questions and I'll see you in the next one.